Hello and welcome my Walla Walla Bing Bangs with no Tang Tang. It's SJB here, and today we're going over all of the heroes in Bloom Star Defense 6. So you might notice that there's quite a few heroes these days. You might not know which ones to use, you might not know which ones are powerful, you might not know what you should be doing if you're a new player to the game. But yeah, here I am. I'm here to help you guys out. We're going to walk you guys through all these heroes. We're going to go over the basics of how, what you should do with them, and then just go over their two abilities very quickly and talk about how to use them. Can't go over every single detail of every single hero, otherwise it'll just be a two-hour video. But we're going to try to get it down for you guys as soon as possible. And if you guys want to, be super duper nice. Press that like button for me, and of course, subscribe if you haven't, man. We've got a lot of cool content on this channel, so uh, let's get started. The cheapest hero in the game at $540 is going to be Quincy. Quincy is an archer who bounces his shots all around to pretty much all of the balloons on the screen. He's very easy to use, and that's why uh, that's why he's not a bad hero. Because for a starter player, just not needing to put him in a specific location or anything like that is very, very helpful. Um, in addition, a level 3 ability here makes him just more powerful in an easy and simple way. It just makes his regular attack faster, so we can understand exactly how much popping power we're going to do with him. As we go up a little higher, he eventually gets cam detection, eventually gets lead popping power. So he really doesn't have a balloon weakness. He can pop every type of balloon, um, just not super duper well. He's kind of the jack of all trades, but nothing, he's not amazing at anything. Gets explosive arrows, extra mob damage, and all that stuff, and eventually he gets the storm of arrows. Now the storm of arrows needs to be used in a very specific way. If you have a bunch of ceramics, this is absolutely perfect for what you'd want to use the Storm of Arrows for, because it just kills pretty much all of the balloons. On the other hand, it's not that good against a big chunk of mobs and things like that. You'll do basically nothing to them. Um, so yeah, try to watch that. As you go up higher and higher, basically all you're doing is just making Quincy stronger. Stronger, more popping power, extra range, a little bit more mob damage, she's a little bit quicker, attack speed, arrows last a little longer, blah 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 blah. So all of this just makes him a slightly more powerful hero, with his regular base attack, um, including making his arrows and things a little bit stronger. So, that's what he's good for. He just does his own thing, he pops some balloons, he's not bad in any way, but he's also not great in any way. Now I am going over the free heroes first, and I uh, feel like you guys can skip to the other heroes if you want to, to try to figure them out, but I want to go over the free heroes because I want to explain how they work and whether or not they're even worth it to use in the game. Gwendolyn is actually one of my favorite heroes in the game, not because she's necessarily the best, but because I like her. Alright, she's fun to use. Uh, she costs $900, so she is a little bit on the pricier side as far as heroes go, especially the free heroes, but definitely not a bad investment. First thing you're going to notice about her is she's got one major weakness, she cannot pop purple balloons. So if you're worried about purple balloons, yeah, I mean, they're not the most dangerous balloon in the entire world, but they can be problematic. In addition, automatically, she cannot pop camos or camo purples, so she just doesn't see them at all. But, she's got one little trick up her sleeve, if she is able to use her cocktail, she can pop camo balloons with that, so if you're able to kind of maneuver that around, that'll be really, really cool. The Cocktail is by far, not by far, but one of the best abilities for a free hero in the game, if not almost all heroes in the game. Definitely a solid thing to use, even if we have 25, you know, zebras coming out and we use our Cocktail here. Uh, you're going to see how much ridiculous amounts of popping power we're going to end up getting out of this. It's almost insane. Like, look at that. that that's crazy. Nobody could pop 25 zebras as a level 3 hero, except for Gwendolyn. She definitely can here. As she goes up, one other thing that's very important is her level 4 ability. Level 4 and level 17 are going to give her a ton, give other towers a ton of extra popping power. And what you want to do is you want to put something with a lot of projectiles next to it. So either a heli pilot or a tack shooter or maybe a monkey ace or something like that. That is a pretty, pretty, pretty good amount of projectiles here because when balloons get in range of her, eventually she's going to quote unquote heat up. And that's going to increase the amount of popping power that your towers can have. Let's see if she's going to heat it up soon. There it is. All right, we just heat it up over here. You're going to see all of our other towers here. We're going to get bonus popping power, extra damage and everything, and we can pop extra lead popping power as well, but it only lasts for a little bit, so you really kind of have to, like, time it or hope that it's going to work when you really need it right there. As you go up higher, most things do not matter too much. A little bit of popping power here and there, um, but basically the next big thing is going to be level 10, Firestorm. Firestorm is pretty much the exact same thing as the Cocktail. Really, 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 really good against uh, balloons. So if you have crap tons of ceramics coming out in here, bajillions of them, you might say, oh my god, there's no possible way we can defill. Would you look at that? We just Firestorm them into oblivion, and they're all going to die. Holy crap, how is that even possible? Yeah, it's kind of insane, isn't it? 
Uh, not super duper powerful against mobs or anything like that, but still can do some damage to them, so you usually want to use this against balloons as much as you possibly can. As you go up even higher, you get nothing too crazy going on for most of the stuff. It's just more damage, more stuff, more attack speed, more firestorm, blah blah blah. But heat it up again, getting more powerful here, definitely super important, and plus two damage to lead balloons. But you might think lead balloons, who cares? DDTs, my friends, DDTs. That's why that matters. Gwendolyn's the DDT popper, which is a big problem for a lot of players in the late game. Three blasts for a shot, and then Firestorm does hugely increase damage, which makes him even more powerful. Her even more powerful. So, definitely recommend Gwendolyn, but you gotta use her right, you gotta make sure you're putting her in the right spot, and you have to make sure you're using her fire in the way, right way. This is something I didn't really mention before, but you definitely want to try to keep her on last, or put her down a straight line or something like that, because the fire actually does last a long time, it can shoot really far away, but... You gotta make sure you're able to actually get the damage out of her instead of just throwing her stupidly and having her shoot off into oblivion. Striker's super simple. Uh, if you look at all the things, it's basically a lot of this and a lot of just making him more powerful. All bomb shooters and mortar monkeys on screen shoot 10% faster. This is the main thing you're using Striker Jones for, is supporting cannons and mortars. So the basic idea of a Striker Jones strategy is to just spam a bunch of uh, maulers and get a couple mortars, either a biggest one or... Uh, artillery batteries, or whatever you want to do, and you can defend almost everything. Because as Striker Jones goes up, he's going to make Black Bloons less resistant to explosive damage. Which might seem really weird. But, at this point, we should be able to have zero Black Popping Power. Is he level 4? He is level 4... Oh wait, 5. At this point, we should have zero Black Popping Power. But we can start to pop Black Bloons. Not every single time, but we can start to pop them, which is... Kind of ridiculous, if you really look at it like that. And as you go up higher and higher, eventually, I think it's level 18, he's going to get that all the way to zero resistance of Black Bloons. So just spam cannons, spam mortars, and Striker Jones is, is good. The other thing he's got is at level 3, he's got a Moab Stunner or a Ceramic Stunner. So whatever you want to do. You can, uh, you know, stun some random ceramics in the early game, or stun some random mobs, or BFBs, or even, oh my god, so you can stun those in their place for a quick second in there, and that's going to be super duper helpful for you. At level 10, he gets this Artillery Command ability, which resets the cooldown on all bomb shooters and mortar monkeys. So specifically, if you're going for some sort of conglomerate of these guys, or maybe involving some sort of artillery battery army or something like that, this will be really, really good to take down a crap ton of BFBs or oh my gods or whatever the heck you need to take down here because we can just use our abilities Use our artillery command Say oh crap my ability ran out Let's use our artillery command and reset our abilities And use them all over again And you can see how much damage we can do even against like a bajillion BFBs With just a couple extra abilities in our squadron here But that's really all it does He's going to become more and more powerful eventually Though like I said I believe it's level 18 here All bomb shooters and mortar monkeys shoot just percent faster And then here we go level 19 attack speed and makes all black balloons vulnerable to explosive damage and level 20 artillery command also does double damage and pops to all these guys so basically the exact same thing that just happened but now we do double damage so holy crap that's actually pretty intense if you can get this gap level 20 artillery command becomes quite powerful out of all the free heroes this is the one that i recommend people to use the most because he's got the most potential he really is a powerhouse in a kind of interesting way you probably want to leave him on strong in most situations because you're going to notice he does damage instead of just popping power. So we can pop through, like, big, big, strong layers pretty quickly in here. Um, and that's really sweet. And as you go up higher and higher, he's going to do more and more damage. Unlike a lot of other heroes, they're just going to do more random popping power. So this guy's actually a little bit better towards the front, kind of-ish. And has kind of a lot of weird things he does. He's got these brambles, which he just throws down on the screen to pop a bunch of balloons. It's not amazing, but it's okay, I and mean, it'll help you out a little bit in here. Uh... It's kind of like a, a glorified Spike Factory-esque type deal, which, yeah, you know, I'll take it. I'll take it. Brambles, they pop balloons. We get a totem to slow down the balloons. And then here we go. This is where it gets really interesting. At level 2, actually, didn't get to show us this, but this is why this guy is probably the best hero in the game. It powers up Druids. So you're going to see this little icon above their name right here. And what this means is we're basically getting the, uh, add a base Druid. Double the popping power out of this base Druid right here. Uh, so all the crazy amount of loot you could possibly imagine, man. If you can get druids next to this guy, he's going to be all-powerful, basically. But you can do it even crazier. You can go for multiple druids, and then you can level up those druids and get a squadron of what we would call probably one of the best, easiest strategies in the game, which is just a bunch of pop lust, thorn swarms, in combination with a couple of pop lust, heart of thunders, and eventually, if you can afford it, you get an avatar of wrath. You get these guys all next to each other, and they get in a multiplier, and you become all-powerful. 
This is how it works. This is how you win the game. Get a couple of these guys. Get a couple of these guys. Get a village next to some of these guys. They've got camp detection. And boom, you win the game. That's it. That's all you got to do. Just kind of as an example, I'm going to show you guys round 98 with just a, a weird little thing in here. And just kind of check it out. Now, we are going to upgrade open just a little bit as we're doing this. Brambles get a little st stronger. Ward gets stronger. Pop extra layers. Oh. And Wall of Trees. Wall of Trees is pretty amazing because Wall of Trees is going to allow us to suck up a crap ton of blooms and a crap ton of stuff and gives extra money out of it. Does not work on chimps, but gives extra money. I believe it's two times the money out of these guys. So it's like bonus money. So you definitely want to use the trees whenever possible, even if it might not seem like it's the best thing ever. In addition, if you want to make your guys even more powerful here, alchemizing them is just delicious. So I know I'm like teaching you everything, man, but holy crap, dude. Just woo! Woo! Get these guys flowing, you're going to be loving life. Uh, as you go up higher, you're going to see magic monkeys get even stronger, blah, blah, blah. Now we can include all magic monkeys. By the way, so super monkeys and other monkeys are definitely going to be a good tower here. But this is round 98. This is the biggest blue bubble in the game, man. And we're taking him down with these little, this little puppy right here. It's kind of crazy what we can do with this guy. <coughs> we go higher and higher and higher. Everything's just going to get stronger and stronger and stronger. All Druids of Wrath start at 200. So we get even stronger with these guys because we haven't lost any lives yet. Even stronger. Wall of Trees is stronger. And we finally reach our highest level. So, uh, main thing is he just supports other monkeys specifically magic monkeys. So these purple monkeys right here, but specifically druids. Use druids if you can next to Oban, and you're going to be having a grand old time. Geraldo is the most complicated hero in the game, and I'll do my best to explain them in a reasonable amount of time here. But uh, just understand that he is so weird and complicated that he is an active, active, active hero. You have to be active in your game to make him powerful, but he's so powerful that we uh, actually did a one-tower chimps with Geraldo at one point, which is just absolutely insane. If you really think about it. Everything is unlocked through his shop. And as you level up, you just get higher things in the shop. So let's just level him up all the way. And I'll show you guys all the things in the shop. So we can kind of just talk about them very quickly. Every time you can, you basically want to build one of these shooty turrets. All right, shooty turrets are very powerful. Take up almost no spot, no space. And they can just do mega damage. Always build them whenever possible. And then usually, if you want to, sharpen these puppies with a sharpening stone. It makes them even more powerful. You can use it for other things as well, but it's not necessary. And one other great thing to use is whenever you get the rabbits available, make sure you're buying uh, three rabbits, and the three rabbits will turn into a mega rabbit, which will start attacking all the balloons anywhere on the screen, and they can pop candles and things like that. So kind of wild. Uh, the other thing is Jerry's Fire. Right now, this is absolutely OP. Impossible to even explain the OPness of this guy right here, but it's, it's just powerful, all right? It, it's just ridiculous powerful. And this is Boebs and things like that, and he's look, just smoking it. It's just insane. Um, so get Jerry's Fire whenever you can. Uh, you obviously have limited amounts of them, so you don't want to use them every single time, but... As far as everything else is concerned, these are all usable, but nothing is necessary. Get your shooty turrets, get your other stuff, and then just kind of, like, see if you need to use any support things. So, uh, nail mines, you can kind of just throw them in the back, and eventually they'll do something. They last forever. These totems don't last forever, but they slow down balloons and allow you to, like, send them backwards. Strength potions. I have not figured out how to use strength potions yet, so I don't even want to touch on that. Quincy Idol, if you're able to, you can, like, build a Geraldo at level, like, 6, and then just build the Quincy thing right away, survive with the free Dart Monkey, and you'll make bajillions of dollars later on, though farms are more efficient, should be noted. Get a Camo Potion. So whenever you're using this on Geraldo, make sure you use it on Geraldo himself, not on one of your other towers, because it'll give every single one of his towers that benefit as well. Um, blue is going to slow down Moabs, or balloons. Use it on Moabs if possible just to kind of keep them in bay and all that stuff. And then another really, really cool thing is to turn your dart monkeys into super monkeys and or throw down some stroms if you're ever worried about big chunks of balloons being in the way. You can strom and kill pretty much everything that was going to be a problem for us without any issues. This works on uh, any farm that throws money outside of it. So it doesn't work on bottom path, but mostly top paths. And then a genie. Genies are probably one of the most powerful things in the game. I don't understand how or why it works this way, but they're just crazy strong. Uh, if you just kind of look at the popping power right here, it's, it's insane. You know, I mean, that's just that's just wild, dude. Look at this. Woo! That's freaking crazy. 10,000 pops just like that. I mean, that's less than, more than, like, everybody else combined, even though he's only around for, like, two seconds. Uh, and then these guys are only for Paragon Monkeys, which probably doesn't matter too much to you guys. You can always gain more lives and things if you want to with this guy. So that's pretty much everything with Geraldo. Hopefully that makes sense. Um, I didn't want to spend too much time on him because he is the new hero. We've probably seen a lot about him. Woo! $2,000! Churchill, what are you doing, buddy? You gotta be freaking OP. Yeah, I mean, he is pretty good, though. Churchill. 
He's just strong. He doesn't support anybody. He just does damage. That's all he does. Honestly, probably not the best hero in the game because he's so expensive and such a hard guy to get, but he still is good for things like deflation, where you just kind of put him down, and eventually he's going to be really, really strong all by himself. So, throw him down as early as you can, within reason, and just sort of level him up. You're going to see its attack range, machine gun, uh, camo balloon popping power, just everything by himself. Black balloons he's a little weak against, though. You're going to have to watch out for the black balloons. His machine gun pops the black layer, but not his regular attack. So you have to wait for the machine gun to attack it, so you can attack it with the other stuff. Um, attack speed, explodes more, Moab Barrage, this is actually really cool. So remember I said he doesn't pop black flutes? Well, he kind of does, if you're able to use your ability. If you use your ability, it'll pop through the black layer, and then if you're ever worried about Moab class balloons, you want to use your second ability, which just shoots a barrage of Moab poppers, and then if you're really, really worried, you can pop all the balloons inside with your extra ability here, and just kind of kill everything. So his abilities are kind of the main way he's going to end up doing a lot of the damage for you, if you're able to use them consistently enough to make it happen. As you go up, it's going to see damage, 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 machine gun, extra damage, damage, speed, blah, 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 blah. Shells exploding, more Mirage Boab stronger. So he's simple. He does popping power. That's really all you need to know about this guy. As you level him up, he's going to get bigger and beefier. Though he's not really that bad. I mean, eventually you're going to have to deal with big chunks of balloons. And you can use Moab Barrage to take those down and then just explode all the balloons inside without any issues. So, very reasonable, but... That big cost at the beginning makes him a little bit harder to use. There's definitely some Ben fanatics out there. He costs 1200 bucks to kind of get going in here. And the reason why I don't like Ben is I think he's boring. I think all the heroes in the game do things and are actives and things like that. And he's kind of just boring. He just makes money. All right, he does extra stuff here with, 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 with all these other things. But I'm actually not even an expert with Ben because I think he's so boring. I don't use him that much. So we'll go over him very, very quickly. But uh, just note that I, I am not an expert in Ben whatsoever. And if I screw something up, I'm sorry. I apologize. The thing you're going to notice about this guy is that if you uh, use this biohack right here, it's going to make your other towers stronger for a little while. But eventually they get turned off, basically. We hacked them so long that they have to turn themselves off. Disconnected, disconnected. So you're going to have to watch out how, to, how you end up using this thing. You have to make sure you time it properly. As you go up, you're going to start earning extra money. So his, the main thing about him is he earns money every single round. Every single round he goes through, he's like a farm, boop, pops out some money. Uh, eventually you're gonna get to level four every uh, one dollar for every new bloom spawn not RPE wise But just every bloom spawn so on level like 27 for example That is a crap ton of money because that's a lot of blooms being spawned lots of yellows lots of reds lots of blah 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 so um, It means the money's just gonna go up drastically here uh, You can see it just kind of existing We earn hundreds of dollars from this one Bank hack so now we can start to get more money out of banks um, restores five lives at the end of every round, which is pretty delicious, I'm not gonna lie. Bloom Trojan, this is actually freaking insane. So, uh, one of his best abilities by far is the fact that he can turn a Moab into nothing by the time it pops. So, it does not do any damage, but if you can pop it, it just instantaneously pops, no balloons inside. It's pretty delicious. Probably one of his best abilities. More bank stuff. Um, and then Siphon Fundy. Downgrades most newly spawned balloons by one rank. Cash per pop of infected balloons is doubled. Lasts for 10 seconds. I've not done the math on how much this is going to hurt or make you money. But the basic idea is if you have something like 50 rainbows coming out, which doesn't normally happen. Well, we're worried about how many rainbows this is. We can't pop all these rainbows. So what we want to do is we want to make sure we kill them down to zebras. And I did the worst timing ever for that. But uh, let's try that again. I guess I have to wait. Okay. Rainbows. With our ability. We turn them all to zebras. And then we double the popping power for it. So it's basically like even amounts of money, I believe. I don't know. I think it's more money, actually. I don't know. It, it makes sense to me more money to me, but it's just not, not perfect. Either which way. Not bad. More income. Skimming. Better. Biohacks increase. Cypher security adds 10 lives now. More money. Blue Trojan earns more. All right. Income. Blue Trojan can back BFB and DDTs. That's insane. Insta-killing BFBs and DDTs is pretty wild. Even though it's not instantaneous, it's pretty wild that he can do that. Biohack lasts 9 seconds. Effect the monkeys pop 3 extra layers. And level 27 funding lasts 20 seconds. And cash per pop is triple the normal effective bloods. So when we could do this to BFBs and things like that, turn them into MOAB, it's just kind of wild. You know, it's kind of hard to imagine that we can just siphon fund and turn BFBs into MOABs or, uh, or, or anything like that. Especially on round 98, this can be freaking wild. Either which way, though, 
He's more elite, mostly a moneymaker and a life maker. That's what he does. He does do some support in, the, in here, but he's not really an attacker necessarily. It's still most of your other towers doing all the work. Izili is most certainly one of the least favorite heroes in the game because she's difficult to use. The major problem with her is she's got no purple bopping power, but she's got everything else. She'll never get purple bopping power, which is interesting too. Um, she's got everything else under her belt. She's got automatic cam detection, automatic lead popping power, um, automatic lit camo lead popping power. It, it's just kind of weird what she can do here. Her major problem is she doesn't get a lot of popping power ever. And her first two abilities are kind of bad. Uh, regen balloons. Doesn't kill them all, just stops them from regening any further. So you still have to pop them. But that can still be a problem for a lot of other towers and heroes and things. You have to actively use that thing? What? What? It's kind of wild. As you go up higher, you're going to get a little bit stronger, but nothing wild. Um, and then you get to Sacrificial Totem, which only works on everything but ships. Or unpopable. You actually need to sacrifice lives. So look at my life count here. We're going to subtract 10 lives to get this totem here, which is going to make things around it more powerful. Yeah, I mean, it's cool and all. But uh, definitely not really a chimps hero, per se. And it doesn't last for that long, either. And you have to sacrifice 10 lives to make that happen? What? What? Might actually be useful if you're able to get lives and from druids or whatever. But yeah, just tough to use. As you go up higher, you're going to realize it strips the camo off, which is pretty cool. And we get to level 10. And this is why Azili can be useful and or good. If we have something like round 98, which is, again, one level that I love to send off because it's big and beefy. The biggest problem with round 98 is the fact that uh, there's so many balloons coming out, it's almost insane to, like, get them all. But the way this works is it's going to jump from one mob to the next infinitely and just instantaneously pop them, just like Ben did before. So if you're able to magically time this properly, you can just get these guys a little low and then just mob hex the crap out of them and take them down infinitely, down into nothing. It is difficult to use, and that's why... People don't really like to use it all that much, but if you can use it properly, it's fan freaking fantastic. As you go up higher, it's just like more damage, more damage, more damage. It's just like, it's alright. And then you finally get to this, which is probably the only reason that a lot of people might like uh, Azili here, is that you can do the exact same thing, but to a bat. And once you get to this level, things get pretty wild because you can just instantaneously kill the bat. What? Yeah, it's awesome, but that's the main thing about it. Is she can insta-kill a lot of big blooms and insta-kill the bad at the very end of the game if you're able to get her level 20. Other than that, she's kind of weak, to be straight with you. She's kind of weak, very active, very time-based, and you got to use her properly with different towers that you might not use all that much in other situations. Pet cost 8 hundo. His uh, biggest weakness is he does not have camo popping power. So uh, camo balloons are uh, a nothing, nothing burger to him. But he does a lot of cool stuff. First of all, Rallying Roar is really good for a lot of towers that have a lot of projectiles, similar to Gwendolyn. So if you're going to use a tag shooter, or a heli pilot, or a monkey ace, or whatever you want to use, be extra specially powerful next to Pat, because it increases that popping power by one. One layer for a short time. So when we do this, we're going to say, all right, if we have something like uh, Tax Rare, that's even more projectiles, and we have a bunch of rainbows coming out, this is usually a big problem for this. With a rallying roar, though, oh, baby, look at that popping power, guys. Look at that popping power. That's actually really good for a level 3 hero and a random low-level attack shooter, man. As we go up, he gets a little bit more powerful. Bigger slap. Pushes balloons backwards a little bit. Stunned for a short time. Increased popping power. Increased attack speed. Increased attack range. And we get to level 10. So this is where it gets a little bit weird. I actually don't like this ability at all. It helps on really random rounds like round 60 and maybe round 80 if you're ready to go for that thing, it's to kill something like, or no, it just pops down that first layer like this. Uh, but really, that's not why we're doing good. We're doing good because Pat is smacking things back. He smacks things back, keeps things in range of us, and then when we have the ability, we use the Rallying Roar to kind of increase our popping power. As we go further and further, um, he just gets a little bit more powerful in general. More layers, big squeeze can affect several big wounds at once. Still not my favorite, though. I don't care about that. I just want to be honest, I don't like his hug ability. I think it affects him because it stops him from doing his slaps. So, if you're going to notice, while we're hugging, see the slaps? Slap, 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 slap. While we're hugging, we stop slapping. And then we blow it out. And that just sucks, man. You need to keep the slaps up to make that hug be worthwhile at all, and it just doesn't. So, it makes him struggle up just a little bit over here. 
Main thing about him, though, is he's really good to kind of use with a couple other support towers right next to him that are all just very, very strong and projectile-based. Definitely want to get attack zone over here and something that something else that can kind of do a lot of pop power like that. And he's your rallying rollers when you're available. And he will actually be a really good hero to your team. Um, I like him. I like him. He's fun. He's an interesting hero. People don't like Adora, but she is my favorite hero in the game. I think she is absolutely deliciously good. Uh, I don't know why people don't like her. Uh, I think she's got one way that she's just deliciously powerful, and you have to do it this way if you want to use a door properly. This is the combo. Get this, get this, and then just get her up as she levels up, and your life will be fantastic. For example, check this out. I spent like $6,000, man. I don't even know. $10,000. It's like almost nothing. $15,000 tops? Uh, and this is round 49. I mean, this is like a tough blue level. Oh, okay. All right. How about, like, round, uh, 55, which is a crazy ceramic level that's really difficult with mobs at the end. Oh, guess what? We can pop that with $10,000, too. This, and this is level 4! She's level 4! This is the strategy, guys. As she goes up, she gets higher and higher and higher, and she has this extra ability here, which just increases our popping power drastically, even around 63. This is probably the first level that we will actually have to struggle against. All right. This is gonna be a struggle, but I just want to show off. This is round 63, guys. This is one of the toughest levels in the game with a level 7 Adora. Use her ability, and we're able to what? Beat the first round of level 63? We won't be able to beat the second round. We're gonna lose a few lives here, but this is just wild. We can take down mobs, we can take down balloons, we can do what with this? With $10,000? $15,000? This is insanity, my friends. Oh, guess what? We popped it. Oops. I'm sorry. Level, oh, we're not even level 7 yet. Dang. At level 7, she gets this really cool thing to sacrifice. So if you're able to build something that you don't want or something like that, like, oh, crap, I didn't want this guy on chimps mode or I don't know what to do with it, you could sacrifice it. And the basic way that that's going to work is it's going to level you up faster than it would by just buying the next level. So there's really no reason to ever buy anything with Adora here. She's going to become stronger and stronger, and eventually she gets to level 10, where she gets her ball ability here. Very powerful against Boa class balloons. Specifically against one balloon, though. So a oh my god or a bad or something like that, definitely use the ball of light on that guy and it'll be fantastic. Um, as you go up higher, you're going to just get stronger and stronger. It doesn't do anything too crazy. It doesn't really do any supports or anything like that. Just kind of exists. Eight divine bolts, attack range, ball of light greatly improved, and we reach level 20. That's all we do. We just do damage, 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 and that's okay by me. Uh, I don't think it's creative or anything like that, but we do do a lot of damage as long as you're supporting ourselves with an alchemist. That's the number one thing. Adora's not good unless you use an alchemist next to her. But if you do use an alchemist, you are pretty much all powerful here, guys. Um, she is a lot more powerful than people imagine. They just don't want to put the money and the investment into her. That's my biggest issue with a lot of people saying Adora's bad. They don't want to invest in her. And you should invest in her. because She gets ridiculously powerful. Look at this. It's just good. It's just good. And that was $1,000 to uh, buy her. So it's not like we're spending a ridiculous amount of money or anything like that. In my opinion, way better than Churchill gotta use her up. You could not believe me if you want, but I'm not a big fan of Brickle. I just think she's kind of lame. Uh, first of all, you have to use her on water, so that kind of sucks. They made her a little bit more powerful, so uh, uh, before, what happened, these kegs used to just automatically blow up every single time any balloons went near them, and just be like, oh, crap, they just blew everything up. Now, at the very least, they kind of timed themselves a little bit better than they used to, but it's still not that good. She has very a lot of trouble with, with a lot of balloons. Main thing she does have is she's kind of like a sniper, so she can do extra damage to these balloons, but it's a little bit difficult to use it all properly. The only reason you'd want to use her is if you're planning on going for a lot of other water heroes, because that's the main thing she does. She buffs your water towers. For example, a flagship carrier and a sub combo will be, I don't want to say unstoppable, but like this is like more than enough to take down most rounds over here. Um, even the crazier rounds, uh, like DDT territory stuff and all that, you know? As long as I have cam protection. I don't know if I get cam protection, but we're going to try. You can do a lot of stuff with these guys. Trust me on it. You just want to make sure you're using her as a support tower for sure. As you get up higher, she does eventually get this sea mines thing, which is just kind of goofy. Uh, uh, Brickle gains an increased attack range and camo bloom detection. Okay, that seems fair. And also, I think it's supposed to make your mines not blow up so quickly, which is kind of weird. Um, yeah. Yeah, I don't use her that much, so I'm not super knowledgeable about her. Once you reach level 10, you're going to get a Mega Mine. This thing's actually really cool, but it actually can hurt you if you use it wrong. So if you have a big balloon like a Zoma God coming out or something like that, we're going to struggle lug against it. Um, maybe even multiple um, Zoma Gods against you. Uh, you got to be careful here because that might Mega Mine and blow up everything all at once, and then you can't deal with all the balloons all at the same time, which can be a pretty decent problem. 
Uh, so yeah, you have to be a little bit careful with how you're gonna be using this guy and using the Mega Mind properly. Because you don't want to blow everything up all at once and not be able to deal with the bleeds on the inside. As you get her up higher and higher, uh, Mega Mind cooldown, na naval tactics, blah blah blah. She's just kind of doing a lot of support things besides just getting extra powerful here. Um, and now naval tactics affects all water-based monkeys everywhere instead of just in your range, which will be helpful for us. Uh, and Mega Mind does massively increase damage to finish us off here. So, uh, yeah, all right. If you want to use her, use her. But I, I would just say stay away from her. Etienne's pretty cool. He does not do any of his own popping power. He just has his drones do all the popping power for him. So uh, you can kind of just like watch it in action here. It kind of just goes all over the place. One thing I will say is he's not doing that much popping power with his drones. He is one of the weaker heroes in the game. He is going to support a lot of your other things. He's going to support with the power of cam detection. That is the main thing he's going to do. He's going to get more and more drone popping power, but at level 7, excuse me, level 8, all monkeys gain cam detection. Boop, there it is. So now he's got this UAV in the background here, which gives all of our towers on the entire screen automatic cam detection. So if you're worried about camo balloons, you just want to build things that don't pop camos, bam, shazam, you got camo detection automatic. Don't need to be able to build a village, don't have anything in range, don't need to decamoize, you got it already. Automatic. As he goes higher and higher, uh, one thing you're going to notice is we get a UCAV ability at level 10. Two drones on the screen now, so we're like, we're like decently powerful with the drones, but they're really not doing much. They're, they're just kind of like helping out a little bit. Once we get to the UCAV though, that's when things can start to change a little bit. Now we can actually do a pretty decent amount of popping power. This thing is reasonably powerful, but the problem is the cooldown is pretty greatly increased. Like, ridiculous style. Um, you have to be very active with your abilities on this guy and time them well to be at all powerful. Again, not really designed to do all the pops, designed to support, just kind of get things going. Alright, more drones. Uh, UCAV is a little stronger and all that. Etienne's range pop power and drone swarm are all cooldown increased. UCAV increased even further. Drone damage. Etienne controls four drones all the time, and then this is where it gets interesting. Once you reach level 20, UCAV turns into an all powerful, almighty, all timing UCAV. Which is actually not all that. He's pretty decent. He's a lot of extra popping power for us. You can see Etienne's actually able to pop loops now. Um, and it's kind of nice to have like a, an extra Spectre on the screen. But I don't even think he's as strong as a Spectre automatically. But he is much stronger when you have to use his ability here. Alright, a bunch of BFPs coming out. You can tell, again, decently powerful. But when we use our ability this time around, woo, we smoke him, baby. We smoke him. And that's what he's good for. Activated UCAP ability is honestly really, really good. And having camp protection for everybody for free. Pretty fantastic. I would recommend Etienne for kind of the weirder maps and the longer maps in the game that you might not, you might struggle with without cam detection. I gotta be clear about this. If you're looking for an easy game, Sada is your answer. She is, in my opinion, probably the most powerful hero in the game all around on almost any map that has anything to do with being close to the map. She's just powerful. All right, I mean, check this out. We were struggle logging with Quincy on level 15 and stuff like that. This is this is a level 3 Sada. I mean, what? What? Dang, we smoked them all. No problem. By ourselves. Without any issues. Uh, at level 3. And this is before we get sword slices through two layers of loots at level 4. Oh, dang. Look at that. This is where we would be at level 15. We can solo level 15, no problem. And guess what? We have automatic cam detection as well. So holy crap, we're just freaking powerful. We shoot super fast. Attack super fast. Only issue is that we have very short range. But on most maps, it probably doesn't even matter that much. So she's just super powerful. All right, really, really, really powerful. Um, her main weakness is she doesn't have any lead popping power unless you use her ability to jump on the balloons. So you're going to have to watch out for that. Make sure you jump on the balloons, but then she leaves the swords on the ground, which can pop through the leads as well. So if you're able to time it, you can even pop around 28, uh, but you probably can't pop around 30. That additional help with her. Um, yeah, I mean, as she goes up, she's going to get stronger and stronger. She does pretty good MOAB damage as well. Not all powerful by any means against the MOABs, but uh, if you're able to time it properly, she's just powerful, man. She's freaking good. All right? She's just freaking good. Uh, more damage. Leaping does more stuff. And then now we have this enchanted ability here. It's enchanted swords. It does not have infinite popping power. It should be noted that if you're trying to solo around 63, for example, and you're like, oh, crap, dude, I'll just use my enchanted swords at the very end of the map here and just pop literally everything. Um, maybe we can, I guess. But uh, it's not infinite. If you get a big regen farm or something like that, she will get overwhelmed by this, so you have to be careful with that. 
Um, other than that, though, it's actually really, really powerful. It goes through Moabs and does even good Moab damage here, but not insane. She's just good at everything. Um, as you get higher and higher, the one cool thing about her is her Enchanted Swords turn into a three-path uh, wraparound here. So even if you're having to deal with uh, big chunks of DDTs or something like that, you have to really do a lot of damage to these DDTs. Again, we're not all about it. It should be noted. For $600, though, the amount of pop power you get out of her is kind of insane. We're popping DDTs with her base attack, and we didn't even use our abilities yet. Now we use our Enchanted Swords. And we just jump around once. Oh, guess what? We go around a second time. And guess what? We go around a third time. We almost sold around uh, round 95 with Saudi. <laughs> That's pretty freaking wild, dude. That's pretty wild. How is that even possible? I don't know. Either which way, though, Sada's a good hero. Use her up. She's powerful. Last, but most certainly not least, Sai. I would recommend Sai. Uh, I'm going to go over the, all the heroes that I would recommend for sure that you should buy and, and or get right at the very end of this video, even though this is a very long video. But Sai is is good. Um, the main reason he's good is you're going to notice his tiny little range here. It's because he's got infinite range. So it doesn't matter where you're at. You can hit the balloons wherever. It's kind of wild also that as a level 3, we can insta-kill a rainbow. Is that is that real? Are those real rainbows getting insta-killed? Oh my god! But we can't do ceramics yet, so that, that makes sense at the very least. Oh my god, yeah, it would be insane if we could do that. So the main thing is, he's got infinite range, um, uh, or I shouldn't say he, I think it's a, a they, but I'm probably going to say he on accident, so I apologize. They do crazy amounts of high tier popping power, but obviously it gets a bunch of smaller level balloons. Might not be quite so efficient. Still pretty reasonably quick attacking though, so not bad at all. Having infinite range though is definitely the main thing about Psy that makes them good. One other thing you can have uh, on your team here is you can stun balloons for a very long time here. So if you get some extra popping power, uh, to get some extra popping power out of them. Um, destroys balloons faster, penetrate through lead balloons. We couldn't pop leads before that, that level right there. Now can destroy ceramic balloons. So now we can destroy ceramic balloons. That's pretty cool, if I do say so myself. Takes a little while to pop them, admittedly, but still, if you can pop ceramics, that's pretty awesome. Destructive resonance causes balloons uh, destroyed by size main attack to damage other balloons nearby. So now we have a grouped attack, so we're able to pop uh, uh, some zebras here. You can see kind of like how we're randomly attacking and hitting other balloons on accident. Um, just extra popping power, not too shabby. Um, as we go up higher, we're eventually going to get this psionic scream. So this is a silent scream that throws the balloons into utter chaos. All right, I like chaos for balloons. Throw out some random zebras up in here, and let's see what this, this puppy can do. Ooh, look at that, that is chaos. That's some wild chaos right there, man. Woo, that's a lot of popping power. Gotta say, not too shabby. Alright, even stronger, even stronger. Moab popping power. Resonance is more destructive. Vibration destroys blues very fast. Target BFBs. Dang. Check this out. This is 25 BFBs, bro. Oh my god. No, you can't. You can't. You, are you kidding me? You don't. What? What are you doing over here, bro? We're insta killing BFPs? Let me just throw them into utter chaos. Why not? Just chaos of them. Sure, sure, sure. All right, that sounds good to me. And maybe we'll get a little bit of stunning action up in here as well with three psychic blasts. Yeah, pretty freaking powerful, if I do say so myself. Um, effect balloons within its, uh, a larger radius. Destructive resonance is much more destructive. Stream holds and damages all balloons on the screen. And he can now hit DDTs and stuff like that. Dang. That's pretty powerful. Look at that. Look how fast that is. And guess what? DDTs? Well, I should have sent out 75 of them. Send out like five DDTs. Alright. Nah, yeah, you know, I mean, no, you know, he's okay. He's alright. But uh, five DDTs, you know, he's not going to be an all powerful round 95 popper or anything like that. That's for sure. But he's good. They. They are good. All right, so it's been a long journey, but let's recap this as quickly as we possibly can. Out of the free four heroes, uh, I would say that Obin's probably my favorite. He's definitely the way to go if you're just starting off and you're trying to er learn the game. Use him with some druids, and you're going to be really, really happy. You can use Gwendolyn as well. She's very powerful, uh, and Quincy's okay. I would say, say stay away from Striker Jones unless you're a professional, or if you just want to spam a bunch of uh, mullers and be kind of lame, because that's a way to play too. As far as everybody else is concerned, the most powerful heroes in the game are by far Sada, Geraldo, and in my opinion, Adora. 
those would be the three heroes that I would say that you probably should use, because they're easy to use, they're fun to use, and they're powerful. And if you're looking for power, that's the way to go. You could go for Etienne for some cam detection if you just like to use other towers. You could use Psy for the tougher maps in the game. And you could use Pat, Churchill, uh, Azili, and Brickle, all in their own special circumstances. But not necessarily the best heroes in the game. Ben is something that I just don't like. So, I mean, if you're just a money maker and a heart maker, go for him. But it's not the style, if that makes any sense. It's not the style. Regardless, that, that's kind of how I would rate them. I did not want to rank them or anything like that, but I think that's what you should go for. Use your free four heroes. Use Geraldo, Adora, and Sada. Definitely best heroes in the game. And then it's up to unlock whoever you feel like, whoever you're kind of in the mood for. If you guys enjoyed, press that like button for me. Don't forget to subscribe. And of course, have a super duper delicious day.